Yes, theme has always been a hopeful one. Me and Chris initially decided that we wouldn't be a here today, gone tomorrow band. I've seen all good people turn their heads each day, so satisfied I'm on my way. What we were convinced was that you could make music that was in the underground tradition, but you could do it and present it in a way that it was available for everybody to enjoy. We were after to try and get as much emotion into making the full use of a melody by doing key changes, by changing the notes around chordal structures underneath it, getting the most out of it, working very much on a classical principle. You couldn't stick Rick Wakeman in just a rock and roll band, or Steve Howard. Chris, especially, uh, his work with Bill, if you listen to Fragile and Close to the Edge, is immaculate. We'd all gather around and discuss whether the next bass note should be F or should it be F sharp, you know, and this took a while, as you can imagine. And we really got the music, really how the group wanted it. And we'd stop when it was finished, look at each other and say, well, that's great, what is it? And they'll say, it's 12 minutes long. Wow. Long distance, not around, long time. Pretty much throw all these ideas and then fashion it into some kind of a song. But once again, with no real definite idea of what the end picture was supposed to look like until we got there. Trevor Raymond, I think, is the catalytic element of the success of the band of the 80s. He gave the band the roundabout of the 1980s. Once you've been in Yes, it is such a tight organisation and looks after its own. And it is the musicians who are there at the time who've had the honour of continuing making the Yes music. Please welcome Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson of Rush. Well, hello. And we thought we waited a long time to get in the Hall of Fame. It is our great, great honor to be with you and yes this evening. Alex? Thanks, Ged. There's nothing so fleeting yet enduring about the way music feels when you're 17 years old. As Yes played in my room, I played too. I spent hours picking my way through songs like Starship Trooper and Yours Is No Disgrace. Now, how, how wonderful was that swirling outro in Starship Trooper? I must have played that a million times. Yes helped give me the gift of music, which is everything, as you know, and made me want to be a better musician, and that provided some of the determination to one day stand on this stage giving tribute to this amazing band. The musical choices we make in our youth help to mold who we become. Choose the guitar intro for going for the one. Yeah. Choose learning to play Starship Trooper on a cheap secondhand guitar. Not so easy. Choose Chris Squire's amazing bass tone, right, Ed? Choose John Anderson's ethereal vocals. Choose Fragile. Choose wearing a cape before Rick Wakeman did. This guy right here. <laughs> Choose Roundabout. Choose the glorious guitar work in Owner of a Lonely Heart. So beautiful. Choose the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And definitely choose Yes. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like he can play Starship Trooper? I don't think so. So picture this. In the early 70s, I spent 
up from one to three years in grade 10 in high school, seated at the back of the class with my new pal, Oscar. I can still recall one of the days that we opted out of school and were sitting cross-legged on the floor of Oscar's room as he introduced me to an album called Time and a Word by a band called Yes that I'd never heard of. Right? I still thrill to the bass part in no opportunity necessary, no experience needed, the way I did the first time I heard it that day. For years, people asked me why I played a Rickenbacker bass. All I have to do is point to that album, that song, and Chris Squire's incredibly original playing to provide the answer. It was a crisp night in 1972 when Oscar, myself, and this guy, Alex Lifeson, lined up overnight around the block that was then Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens to finally witness Yes live for ourselves. It was like nothing I'd ever seen or experienced before. It was actually profound. And it's not overstating things to say that it changed the way I played and listened to music forever. And so here we are, decades later, and the music of Yes is still echoing down through the years, showing me that music truly is a continuum. So on behalf of Oscar, my good friend and Alex's Neil, who's not here tonight, Alex and myself, I say thank you, Yes. It's our great, great honor to finally welcome Yes into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. fans everywhere. Really. It's kind of interesting. I went to the Hall of Fame about four years ago with my beautiful wife, Janie. There she is. And I walked around the Hall of Fame and all my heroes were there. All these great people. And we're going to join them. I can't believe it. It's truly amazing. I was very lucky, you know. It's actually 49 years ago tonight that I met Chris Squire in a bar. I remember going to him and saying, hi, Chris, how are you? He was so tall, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, we got a band going. We had uh, a guitar player called Peter Banks. Now, really, we had a drummer called Bill Bruford, he's there. Mr. Bill Bluford. He's behind me. <laughs> but Chris is in heaven now, and Peter Banks is in heaven, and the spirit of them, they're there tonight. They're here with us tonight, that's for sure. OK, I'm Steve Howe. Of course, we'd love to thank all our fans for believing all these years that we deserve and need to be inducted into the Rock and Roll of Fame anyway. <laughs> Nothing can take away the response we've gotten from our fans, who obviously have a different ear from the general music lovers. Fortunately for us, they're able to distinguish the textures and the harmonies and the discords and the dynamics of the dramatic and the humble and the soft and the low and the quiet. And as Bill used to say when asked, what is Yes music? Bill would say simply, some of it's fast and some of it's slow. <laughs> I'd just like to take a minute now just to thank my wonderful wife and our wonderful family who've been behind us through the highs and the lows. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to thank Apart from all the guys in Yes that I work with, my father, who played a massive part in my, uh, in my musical career, my, my family were all, all in the entertainment business. He taught me a lot. I remember he sat me down once and said, 
son, he said, don't go to any of those really cheap, dirty, nasty, sleazy strip clubs, because if you do, you'll see something you shouldn't. So, of course, I went, <laughs> and I saw my dad. <laughs> they, uh... um, I'm glad that we're, we're actually up third, because as you get older, you know, the old things like the prostate start acting up a bit. And the, the distance between comfort breaks gets less and less. Um, but I would like to say quite seriously how important it is to have, have the old examination, which I had indeed on Monday. No, no, and for you, you ladies who don't know, it's really tough. You have to get in the old fetal position. You hear the old plastic glove go on, the rubber glove. And then it's like a gopher going on holiday inside you, Wrexham. And, uh, Whilst I was having my examination, the doctor said to me, he said, Mr. Wakeman, he said, uh, there's no need to be embarrassed. It's not unusual to get an erection at this kind of procedure. <laughs> and uh, I said, I haven't got an erection. He said, I know, but I have. Uh, the, uh, thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah. 
I love it. Thank you so much. You're so beautiful and wonderful out there. Thank God for music. That's all we know. Take care.